All right, good evening. God's peace to you as we gather another Saturday night uh, as we prepare tomorrow to receive God's gifts. Communion is tomorrow. Uh, to prepare our hearts, to acknowledge ourselves, who we are before Him. This is what we do in the service ahead of time, you know, confession and absolution. And it's good to maybe do that beforehand too, uh, tonight, before we go to bed, uh, reflecting on our lives and things like that. So hopefully we'll do a little bit of that as well. Uh, might be a little bit of a shorter one tonight. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll sing one of the hymns we'll be doing tomorrow. We'll read the text, uh, discuss the text a little bit. And go from there. Hello, good evening to all those of you who are logging on. As I see, Amy, good to see you all. Brent, uh, Janet, my grandma, good to see you. Uh, and God's peace as we get started tonight. Um, tomorrow is the third Sunday after Pentecost. As I said, we, you know, we've been kind of moving along ahead. Now we're in the green season. The green season is about the life of the church. The first few weeks are about how do we come into God's kingdom, his, his presence and all that good stuff. How do we live? What does this kingdom invitation look like? Uh, how is it initialized and stuff like that? And so we'll get into that with the gospel reading. Uh, but before we do anything else, we'll start with the, in, uh, the, the tomorrow's first hymn. Uh, the hymn will be hymn number 685, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. I'll sing a couple verses here to get you some flavors uh, for what we'll be singing tomorrow morning. <clears throat> Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure. Through a world that would deceive us, and to sin our spirits lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims hear our home above. Full of faith and hope and love, let us do the Father's bidding. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness, where he is there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. Full all discomforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to know. Yeah, there's the first two verses of that uh, for us tomorrow. Uh, I always love that one. It's always kind of fitting as Jesus calls his apostles to follow him in the text for Matthew's gospel. Uh, it's just uh, interesting to see this song kind of highlight some of those things. Let's follow where Jesus leads us. His example, pure. Uh, Jesus, you know, he'll tell them, you guys will be like me. It's enough for a servant to be like his master. And, you know, guess, look how they treated the master of the house, guys. My, these Pharisees, these opponents of mine, they call me the devil, right? Beelzebub, uh, the chief of demons. You know, they're they're going to call me that. Uh, what you guys are going to look like out there in the world is like that as well, right? They're going to call you Satan. They're going to call you much worse, maybe even than that. Uh, what are they going to call you? So yeah, it's part of that example of Jesus. Uh, it's Ignatius of Antioch. Uh, he's writing in the second century. And uh, he, as he's on his way to Rome to be killed, uh, martyred and things like that, thrown to the lions. And he says this, that the greatness of Christianity is not in its ability to convince the world, but the greatness of Christianity consists of it being hated by the world, right? It just hates Christians for who we are. Not because we're jerks and, and things like that, like we go out of, out of our way to be a thorn in people's sides. But uh, just by speaking the truth, people are just not going to be happy with that. Uh, as, as such, right? The world's in darkness. It crucified the Lord of glory, the author of life, as Peter will say. You know, So it will malign those who fire along as well. Uh and uh, so, yeah, so that song kind of highlights some of those themes as well as you go through. Um, then as we go through tomorrow's service, we have confession, absolution. The intro it tomorrow is from a couple of the Psalms and other parts of Scripture. And uh, it talks about, you know, 
because of who our trust is, whom shall we be afraid? And then I'll pick up tomorrow with some of the service themes and things like that with fear. That, that's kind of the big topic for tomorrow is, is being afraid. What, what should you be afraid of and things like that? What, what deserves your fear? Uh, and, and that kind of stuff. And when we put that all on God, there's nothing that we really have to fear outside of that. Um, we recognize who we truly fear and look to for all things. Uh, so the intro kind of picks up on some of those themes. That's the point of the intro it in the service is it, it, it brings out the themes that will, you should be catching in the service. So after we do confession and absolution, the first thing you're going to notice is the intro it, and that will pick up on, here's what you should be getting out of the service today. Here, this is kind of the summary, if you want a summary statement, um, all that good stuff. So pay attention to that tomorrow as, as the intro it is read, and realize, oh, this is what the service is going to try to tell me today. This, this is the point of the service. Uh, and the scripture readings and the sermon and whatnot. Uh, and then we go through, you know, the curie, salutation, the prayers as we lift before God. Uh, and then we do the readings. Uh, the Old Testament reading is the prophet Jeremiah chapter 20. Uh, and just a brief summary of that. Uh, I, Jeremiah, he's called the weeping prophet. Because uh, he ultimately, he always co goes to God with his pain. He'll say, God, I have no friends. Uh, God, I, the words that you give me, people hate me. Uh, because I say this, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, God will even tell him that, like, go say it anyway, Jeremiah. This is what I've given you to say, um, and blah, blah, blah. And the opening lines for tomorrow in Jeremiah, just really get this. Uh, verse 7, Jeremiah says this, Oh, Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. Uh, so you kind of get the, the prophet, the burden uh, of the prophet's call, to what they're supposed to say and what they're supposed to do. It's not easy. Uh, if you've read the prophets before, you, you get some of this. Uh, some of the things that God tells the prophets to say or do is out of this world. You know, sometimes I look, I'm like, whew, thank, I don't have to say that. Thank you, God. Uh, that, you're not making me do that thing uh, that some of the prophets have to do. I won't spoil it. Go read some of the prophets. You, you get a laugh out of them sometimes. You feel, you feel for them. Uh, and so uh, Jeremiah is talking about like, ah, everyone's against me. They're all, they're waiting for me to fall, to slip. And, and uh, it, so he calls upon God, you know, you're with me as a dread warrior. You'll protect me. You'll watch over me and, and things like that. Uh, Romans chapter six is the epistle lesson for tomorrow. And it's piggybacking off of what was the reading beforehand. You know, that we are baptized into Jesus Christ. That means sin is done away with. Uh, that we're now being crucified with Christ, we're buried with him. What place does sin have in your life? And the answer is none. Uh, now that Christ has done all this and you're now included in his kingdom, sin doesn't have a place. So in our lives, we look, we actively search for where our sin is clinging to us. And we try to, now it's like a ripoff thing, you know, it's because now we're in grace, loved by God, forgiven. And now it's time we put it all away. Uh, it's uh, don't make, don't obey sin's passions because it lures us in, right? It looks good. It looks inviting. That's easy to do often. Uh, so Paul pleads, you know, don't, don't present yourselves as sins, uh, as instruments for unrighteousness, but for righteousness. Uh, you were once slaves to sin and to the law and things like that, but now you're slaves to God and to righteousness, right? You, everyone has a master, Jesus, right? Everyone is a slave to something. Uh, you're either slaves to the devil, the world, your sinful flesh, or you're a slave to God. And, and when you're a slave to God, you're granted peace and joy and all that good stuff uh, and, and life forever with him. So that's kind of where Paul goes at with all these. And the, the famous thing, once someone said, Romans 6 verse 23 should be like our John 3.16. Right? It should be like the verse that you memorize. It's the, God, it's the law and the gospel perfectly summarized. Here, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, so it does that, you know, recognizes our sin and our fallenness. Here's what we've earned based on our own actions, thoughts, and deeds and whatnot. Uh, but now this free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. Yeah, that's uh, the gospel boiled down in a statement there as well. Uh, and then tomorrow will be uh, Matthew chapter 10. What I'll do is I'll read Matthew chapter 10, our text for tomorrow, which is also the sermon text. And give you some uh, overview of what's going on in the base text. Uh, what, what is Jesus getting at here with a lot of these points? So here we are, Matthew chapter 10, uh, 5a, the first section kind of puts the context on it, verses 21 through 33. These 12 Jesus sent out instructing them, 
brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill a soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Yeah, so chapter 10 in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus has five speeches in Matthew's Gospel. It's to mirror the five books of Moses. Jesus is the, the new and better Moses. He's a prophet like Moses who is greater than Moses. Um, and so this is the second speech of Jesus. It's often called the missionary discourse. At the end of chapter 9, Jesus has looked out and said, Guys, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So pray to God that he would send out the Lord of the harvest. Pray to him that he would send out workers into the field. And at the very next verse, Jesus answers that prayer. Uh, he gathers the 12 and says to them, hey, guys, I'm sending you out as the laborers into the harvest field now, right? And so Jesus answers kind of his desire for the prayer in chapter 9 at the end there. So it's a nice kind of a connection point to the previous chapter. And he calls to him his disciples and he says, you know, I, at this scene, I always kind of picture Jesus out on like top of a hill. Have you ever been up in a high place and you can kind of see for miles? And I can imagine Jesus he's looking out and you can see all these little communities dotted out in the distance, uh, right? Maybe they'll smoke from fires for cooking and whatnot, and people's homes are kind of rising in the air, and you can kind of see all these little little cities and villages. And he looks at his disciples and is like, "Hey, I want you to go there. All right, I want you to go ahead of me. I'm about to pass through all these little towns and villages, and I'm going to preach there and talk. But I need you to go there ahead of me. I need you to prepare. Right? I need you to tell them, hey, someone's coming after us, guy. You got you to gotta get ready. You got to hear this guy who's coming. Uh, and so here's what I want you to do, my 12, my apostles. I want you to preach. I want you to teach. I'm giving you authority to do these things. You're going to heal. You're going to raise the dead. Right? You're going to perform these signs and, and wonders and things like that. And so when people go, whoa, what is coming on? You can say, hey, there's this guy, Jesus. And here's the reason why we're coming. This guy's coming. And you got to be ready. And so Jesus kind of sends them out, you know, he's, he go this and don't waste time. He tells them, you're not packing food here. Don't go home and start packing your supplies. It's not a camping trip. Uh, don't, uh, you know, it's not a vacation. Uh, you're going into these towns to do some work and the time is short, right? The work that I've been given to do, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, you know, we as a, you know, now our churches are back home. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, get going, do the job that needs to be done. Uh, so don't even worry about packing extra clothes. Uh, you know, take what is on you and get going. And, and you, when you go to towns, you'll find if you'll find people there that are going to be agreeable and listen to you and like, yeah, we want to hear more. Right? Stay with them. They'll take care of you because right, a worker deserves his wages. Right? They'll put food on the table for you. They'll be like, hey, you look hungry. Here's some food. Thanks for teaching us today. Thanks for getting us ready for this Jesus guy. Can't wait to meet him. Um, things like that. You know, so that they're prepping ahead of time. People are going to take care of them. Uh, who are going to take care of them. And he's like, and if people don't, if no one is in the town worthy, you know, just shake off the dust from your feet. Yeah, you know, don't even let the dust stick from you. You know, the, the dust doesn't deserve to be taken with you, right? And Jesus kind of gives that warning. It, the, let you let them know that it's going to be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah, which was burned from heaven, right? Uh, it's going to be more bearable for those people than it will be for them who have rejected me, right? So because something greater than the books of Moses, something greater than... Uh, what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah is happening in Jesus' day. Himself is here. Uh, so he kind of tells them, hey, and this is going to happen. Then he kind of says, and you know what? 
Guys, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, right? Uh, be wise as serpent, as innocent as doves, right? Be careful, right? Beware of men, he'll say, because they'll drag you into the synagogues. They, they'll beat you because of me, um, right? Because you're talking about me. You're going to say, this Jesus guy's coming. Here's what he's going to do. And they're going to say, no, he's not. And we don't care. Uh, and they'll hate you for it. And so then he kind of starts describing this is what you, you, some people will receive you. Yeah, but a lot of people are going to reject you too. And you see this played out uh, time and time again. I always got to remember that, right? It's not on me. I'm just here to say the message. You as Christians, fellow brothers and sisters, you're just here to say the message. Uh, leave it up to God. It's up to him to convert or not. Uh, and what he will do with that message um, of proclaiming Christ. And if they don't, that's on them. Uh, totally on them. And, uh, and Jesus kind of gives them a warning, but here's what they're going to do to you too. Uh, you know, you're going to be hated. They're going to deliver you over the death. And that's where our text begins. You know, a father is going to take his child and say, kill him, kill my son, kill my daughter. I can't stand what they're saying, what they stand for. Uh, you don't deserve, they don't deserve to live. Man, that's shocking. Hard words. Uh, children, right? They're going to rise up against mom and dad and say they need to be put to death because we don't agree with what they're saying uh, about this Jesus guy. And what he's here to do, this kingdom that Jesus brings. No, we don't care about his kingdom. We care about this kingdom, X, Y, Z, whatnot. Uh, you'll be hated by all for my name's sake, you know, but you know, he who endures the end will be saved. And when they persecute, just go to the next town over, guys. You know, there's plenty of towns, plenty of people. Get to work there. Uh, you, you won't get through all the towns before I get back. Uh, you know, and then he kind of says, you know, you're not above me, right? Don't expect to go out there and you're just praise and, and heaped on and, and things like that. Uh, you know, if I'm hated, what are you going to be, right? If they call me the devil, what are they going to call you who are with me, right? You, start, you hang out like Jesus, you're going to smell like Jesus. Uh, you're going to be treated like Jesus. So, yeah, that, that's kind of how it works out. And then you, kinda, you, know, and you hear all this, I want you, you got to wonder what the apostles are thinking. As you know, hated, killed, whipped, we're going to be hauled in front of governors and kings. What in the world? You gotta wonder if they're maybe a little bit nervous and scared. Like it's gonna happen, and you know, and it will happen to them. Eleven out of twelve of them are gonna die um, for this confession of faith that they're gonna make. They will be hauled in front of the kings and killed for it. And so you gotta wonder if they're a little scared. Like man, it's obviously worth dying for because it's true. Jesus has risen from the dead. Uh, but you wonder that th at this moment, you know, before everything's happened, Jesus is saying this ahead of time. If they're scared, I would be. Uh, and then, so Jesus kind of gives them a comfort. You know, don't be afraid of these guys. Don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid when this stuff happens to you. Uh, because I'll, I'll let you know, everything that's hidden right now to the world that the world doesn't see, it will be made known. And I told you guys ahead of time. So you're letting the world know ahead of time, right? Your guys, you guys are going to be the ones that let the cat out of the bag. That's, that's the job of the Christian church. We're here to let the cat out of the bag uh, and let the secrets of God be made known. Even if the world says, no, that's not true. Uh, that's our job. And Jesus says, don't worry, because one day it will be made known. Everything that's said in secret right now will be publicly revealed. Everything that's hidden in the dark will be made known to all. Everyone's going to see it. Everyone will acknowledge it. Everyone will bow, even those who are it's against their will. Uh, so, you know, Jesus says, don't be afraid of them, because you guys know the truth, and it's worth dying for. Um, you know, so don't fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, right? All these people, these threats, Parents killing their children, parent, children killing their parents over Jesus, uh, right? These people can only do so much. Uh, fear, you know, if you don't fear them. Don't worry about them because their fears come to an end one day. Uh, so, but then Jesus kind of strangely redirects their fear, right? Rather fear him who has the authority, who has, you know, the ability to destroy both soul and body in hell, right? This isn't the devil, right? The devil does not rule hell. Uh, oftentimes you'll hear some people say, I want to go to hell because me and the devil are going to make a lot of nonsense and stuff like that. But the devil does not rule hell, right? He goes there to be punished, right? If you want a ruler in hell, it's God, right? He's the one who set up the thing. Uh, and he sends that it's made for the devils and the demons to be punished. And for those who can't believe, they disbelieve, right? They get thrown where the devils and angels go. Uh, the devil and his d d demons go, right? It's not made for man. That's the terrible thing about hell is that people are going to be thrown there, uh, and it's not made for them. It's not where they're supposed to be going. Yeah, but that's the terror. That's the price of rebellion at the end of the day. Uh, and so this is a terrible thing. So don't fear any of these guys. Fear him who can do these things, right? The Father. That's who God redirects fear. And that maybe is odd. That's kind of what the sermon is going to be based on tomorrow is fear. Now, fearing the right thing. Because when you fear God, you won't fear anything else, right? Because uh, 
Fear directs your goals in life. Fear will direct your worship, right? If fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Uh, when you fear God, uh, you'll find out that he'll be able to say to you, do not be afraid, and things like this. Uh, so that'd be kind of where it goes. And and, and Jesus, but I don't want to spell, take too much of that, but you know, think on those words. Fear him. Because oftentimes in society, we're moralistic, therapeutic deists, right? We, we think God's this nice, cuddly teddy bear and things like that. But he's anything but. Um, yeah, he deserves your fear. He deserves all your fear. Uh, that's Because he's God. He deserves every emotion of yours, every thought, every feeling. Uh, of course, he deserves all your fear too. And, and not just uh, serve out fear, right? That's kind of one of my points tomorrow is oftentimes... People will say, well, I really don't have to fear God, right? It's th- that's talking more about a servile fear, like a child-fearing father. And yeah, but when people do that, all of a sudden, like, oh, good, right? They take that, like, I'm good then. I don't really need to be afraid of God. And then they go about their merry way. And it's like, well, then you miss. Now you should be afraid. Uh, it's stuff like that. So when you properly fear God, it gives a right channel, right? Fearing God gives you the right channel for fear. Because otherwise, you're going to be afraid of every little thing out there. Uh, and in our day, right, and right, and you'll see that left and right. Um, but yeah, so Jesus goes into, and after he's saying, fear this guy, fear the father who can, you know, has authority to absolutely destroy you. Uh, don't fear, don't be afraid. Right? He goes into fear him. So you don't be afraid, uh, cause you're more worth more than many sparrows, right? Uh, God knows all the numbers, which is terrifying. If you think about that, God knows more about me than I do. I don't know how many hairs in my head are at any given moment, but God does. That's kind of scary if you think about it. You know, I'm the clay. Yeah, he, God knows his creation much more than the creation knows itself. Uh, this is why we trust the word of God, right? This is why we trust that when the scriptures say that we are corrupted fully, uh, uh, when we're corrupted fully, right, we, we might not see that on a day-to-day basis. We will say, well, people are generally good. We don't believe that because we can observe it. We believe it because the scriptures tell it about us. This is what God has to say about us. Right, your guys, the heart is full and full of deep and sin and ugly things like that. We believe because God has said it about us, uh, and then we look also. Thanks be to God that He has you know, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. That's Paul in Romans once again, uh, Romans seven, I think. Um, yeah, and so thanks be to God for this that he, he rescues us. Right, so we believe the Word of God. He's saved us from ourselves and from our sin. Uh, thanks be to God for that. Uh, so yeah, so everyone acknowledges me before men. I will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven, but whoever denies me before men because they're scared of men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. So with these words, Jesus sends them out, right? It's kind of his, this is how I want you guys to be my missionaries, to be my witnesses, to testify about me. Uh, and the world's going to hate you for it, but do it anyway, because you know the truth and the truth will set you free, right? This is, that's John's gospel. Uh, so there you go. There's a kind of a brief summary of what you can expect tomorrow, at least some context. That's not really the driving point of the sermon, um, but that's kind of what's going on behind the text uh, that we were reading because we're just kind of getting those few verses there and we're missing kind of the grand story that's kind of happening around it, why Jesus is sending them out. Uh, he's preparing them. Kind of, it was almost kind of a training session. It's almost like their vicarage. Uh, when I went on a year internship, Jesus kind of sent them out like, you're going to be doing this afterwards, so get some practice in now and you can come back to me and we can talk about it and we can go from there, right? So that's kind of how they're doing that. So there you go. Uh, there's that text for tomorrow. Of course, salvation to us has come. We're singing a Nicene Creed. Uh, sacrament will be d- dished out tomorrow. Uh, the goods of God. Prepare your heart. Prepare your minds to receive that. Uh, to fear God so he can look at you and say, don't be afraid. So, and then of course the closing hymn I thought would be quite fitting is hymn number 666. There you go, 666. And the hymn title is Little Flock, Fear Not the Foe. Um, So that'll be our closing hymn for tomorrow. So there you go. There's a brief outlook for the service tomorrow and what to expect and what to look for. Uh, and we'll give thanks to God. Pray that He be uh, we be granted His Holy Spirit, that we may hear and believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, and fear Him, love Him, and trust in Him above all things, because that's what it means to have a God, is someone you fear, love, and trust in above everything else. Uh, so there you go. Let us close then with a prayer. We'll clo- uh, finish the prayers with the Lord's Prayer, and I'll give you guys a blessing. So let us pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we come before you as your children. Uh, Tomorrow we'll be gathering at your altar and we will be receiving your gifts. 
and we'll be hearing your word. And we ask that we would hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. That you would send us your Holy Spirit that we may ever hold fast to your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, prepare our hearts and minds that we may have a fear, true fear, love, and trust in you. That we may grapple with you, that we may wrestle with you, uh, that we may ever look to you for all things, whether it be good, bad, but we know where you, that you stand. And even if the way forward is terrifying, we know that we are in your hands. And we commend ourselves, our body and soul to you, knowing that you hear us and love us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God's peace to you, Christ Lutheran. We'll be looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks for the messages. Uh, And take care. God's peace. And see you in the morning.